to one of the most popular alternative processes around, cyanotypes. This process is somewhat similar to salt printing, which we covered in episode 25, except that cyanotypes yield a blue image versus a brown one. So what exactly is a cyanotype? Like salt prints, cyanotypes have been around about as long as photography itself, making them one of the earliest types of photographic images. In fact, the very first book of photographs was published in 1843 by Anna Adkins, who is also considered the first female photographer. Adkins' handwritten book contained cyanotype photograms of algae that she contact printed using the cyanotype process. The book was called Photographs of British Algae, Cyanotype Impressions. A cyanotype is basically a photographic print that is monochromatic, meaning it's made up of different values of a single hue which in this case is blue. Blueprints, which are used in architectural drawings, are made by the same basic process as cyanotypes. Creating cyanotypes is similar to making photographic prints in the darkroom and is very hands-on. What makes them even more appealing to photo student artists is that they can be made at home without the use of an enlarger or a traditional darkroom. So if you have ever wanted to make your own photographic enlargement the old-fashioned way but don't have access to a darkroom or a film camera, Cyanotypes are going to be your ticket to success. All you need to make a cyanotype are the following materials. A formulary cyanotype kit, available online at www.freestylephoto.biz, a digital negative, a soft, fine bristled brush, a sheet of 8 by 10 inch watercolor paper, a contact printer, which you can make yourself, a pair of clamps, a tray large enough to accommodate the watercolor paper, and the sun, your source of ultraviolet light. To get started, the first thing you need to do is prepare your chemicals. In your kit are two pre-measured dry chemicals, potassium ferrocyanide and ferric ammonium citrate. You mix these chemicals with distilled water and store them separately in brown bottles. I use hydrogen peroxide bottles that have been well rinsed out. When it's time to coat the watercolor paper, be sure to go into a darkened room with a weak light source, such as a bare 60 watt lamp, placed fairly far away. The solutions become UV light sensitive once they've been mixed together. Mix equal amounts of the two solutions in a clean container. An ounce of each is plenty if you're only going to coat a few sheets. Use masking tape to secure a sheet of watercolor paper to some old newspaper, covering the corners just enough to keep it in place. Now apply a smooth layer of the solution to the watercolor paper using even strokes with the paintbrush, moving horizontally and then vertically to make sure it's evenly distributed. If you're in a hurry, you can quickly dry your watercolor paper with a hair dryer. Otherwise, store the paper in a totally dark place until the emulsion is bone dry. The next step is to choose your image and create your digital negative. The reason you use a digital negative is simple. Since you want a decent sized print and the image must be contact printed, you'll need a large black and white negative. If you had access to an 8x10 view camera, sheet film and the processing chemicals, you'd be in business but I'm assuming that isn't the case for most of you. Therefore, we'll be making our 8x10 negative digitally in Photoshop. You begin by choosing a high resolution image that has good value and a lot of contrast. Sanotypes, as a general rule, don't render great midtones, but are contrasty in nature. After you've brought your image into Photoshop or any other digital imaging program, convert the image to grayscale. I'm using this image I took of a thistle in the winter. The next step is to invert your image so that it becomes a negative image. You do this by going to Image, Adjustments, Invert. Now flip the negative horizontally by selecting all of the image, then going to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. One of the challenges of getting a decent printout of an image on transparency film is to make the image denser than you normally would. Otherwise, what looks good on the screen doesn't usually look so good on the film. The best way to do this is to increase the contrast and lower the brightness so that you have a nice dense negative. The simplest way to do this is to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness Contrast and adjust the sliders accordingly. An even better way to do it is to use the Shadow Highlights feature which allows you to have total control over the tonal range of the image. Once you're satisfied with your image, print it out at high quality onto 8.5 by 11 inch transparency film making sure that the image size doesn't exceed 8 by 10 inches. This is a contact printer, which isn't much more than a hinged photo frame with glass on the top and a flat level surface on the bottom. 
you can actually use a photo frame as a contact printer, making sure that there's some sort of textured surface that can keep your paper from sliding. Now that you're ready to make your exposure, go into your darkened room, lift the glass, and place the treated watercolor paper on the surface in the center. Then place your transparency negative on the top and center it, making sure that the emulsion or inked side is on the bottom against the paper. Close the glass and secure it with clamps to compress the negative and the paper together to ensure a sharp image. I always use full sun to expose cyanotypes because it takes much less time than using quartz lamps, like we did for salt prints. Cyanotypes are considerably less light sensitive since iron is the sensitized material instead of silver. Take your contact printer outside and place it at an angle facing the sun. I use an easel for this purpose, but you can simply lay it against something instead. Take note of the time and give it about 8 to 10 minutes in the sun. There's really no way to calculate exposure time using UV sources because there are so many variables that affect proper exposure. I will say that your paper should turn from yellow to an almost white or washed out blue before it's ready for processing. Once your exposure is made, take your contact printer inside for the final step. Remove your watercolor paper from the contact printer and place it in a tray of cold water. Agitate the print by rocking the tray from side to side and front to back. This process removes any unexposed chemicals from the print. After four or five minutes, your wash is completed and you're ready to lay your cyanotype flat on newspaper and allow it to dry. And here's the final product. Note that the blues get a bit darker and more saturated after drying, which really makes the whole thing pop. If your final print looks too light or too dark, adjust your exposure accordingly until you get the exact result you want. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope you learned something new. If you decide to give cyanotypes a shot, please post your results on the Photography 101 Facebook site. We'd love to see them. Until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.